set an alarm for 8 a.m. Done. Your alarm's set for tomorrow at 8 a.m. Turn off the bedroom lamp. Turn on the night light. Hey, welcome everyone. In this video, I'm doing a review of the Lenovo Smart Clock Essential. This is the latest smart speaker from Lenovo, but with a twist. It has a display, but the display is mainly a clock. Lenovo does have smart displays, one that I already reviewed. A link to that is in the video description. With smart displays, you typically have Google Assistant built into them. You can also cast certain apps from your phone or cell phone to the Google displays. You can look at images and other features. With this essential clock, it keeps things simple. It has a four inch display, which might sound small for today's standards, especially as most phones average a five and a half inch display, but hear me out. The display size is not a problem at all, since the actual time being shown is in large text size. Despite the small display, I can easily see the time even from 25 feet away. And that's outside my bedroom, down the hallway, and a quarter way down the stairs. In fact, compared to traditional clocks, as you can see here, the essential clock has slightly larger text size. The display will also automatically adjust its brightness level. So the darker the room is, the dimmer it gets. The brighter it gets in the room, the brighter the display becomes. This is especially great when, you know, at nighttime you're walking around, you don't want the display glaring too bright, but in the early morning, it's bright enough so that you can see if you have a bit of sunlight coming in the room where you turn on your room light, for example. My only gripe about the display is that it displays a zero at the front of the time, as you can see shown here. Another example is, let's say it's 7, 10 a.m. It'll actually show as 07, 10 a.m. Um, this isn't a big deal, but I do find it kind of bizarre that it does this. Here in Canada and, well, generally in North America, we don't usually display the zero on the front. Traditional clocks will usually have it just blanked out. It might be commonplace throughout the rest of the world to have a zero at the front of the time, but because the clock knows it's in Canada, because I had to pair it with my smartphone, it should know to accommodate by removing that zero. Continuing with the display, just above the time is where the date is shown. On the left of the time, it'll display a symbol if an alarm is set. We'll get back to how alarms work later on. At the bottom left are symbols for the day's weather. Lenovo actually lists what the symbols are and what they mean in the manual itself, but they're pretty straightforward and easy to understand, especially considering that they're pretty much the same standard symbols you would see in, say, another weather app, or when you're watching the weather forecast on TV, they always use pretty generic symbols. On the bottom right, the current outside temperature is shown. It will not show the inside temperature, even if you have a Nest thermostat, but that's okay. The body is rather compact, which is great, measuring at a small 2.52 by 4.76 by 3.72 inches. In a nutshell, just to make things easy, I placed my Galaxy S10 Plus phone next to it to give you a better idea on the size. This compact design allows for more space on your nightstand table for other items. For connectivity, it uses Wi-Fi 5 and not Wi-Fi 6, which I'll give it a pass on because it doesn't use that much data. More information as to what Wi-Fi 5 and 6 are, links to those videos are in the video description. Now the Lenovo website shows that it has Bluetooth built into the smart clock. I tried connecting my smartphone and tablet to it, you know, maybe some stream some music or even see if it could accept phone calls through it. Unfortunately, it doesn't work. I'm not sure what the Bluetooth purpose is. Maybe with this future update, it'll be enabled. However, it works as a speaker to cast audio to and it even supports the multi-speaker functionality like other Google Assistant smart speakers. At the top of the clock are buttons for volume control, play pause for music, and the alarm setting button. The remainder of the surface behind the buttons is actually an alarm snooze button. And as you can see, I'm testing it out. Top surface snooze button doesn't work properly. I have to randomly press everywhere, hoping it'll stop the alarm, which ironically for a smart clock is a terrible design because that's one of the most basic functions that a clock should have. It's actually easier to just tell your Google Assistant to stop or cancel the alarm. To set an alarm is pretty easy, just like a traditional alarm clock. Just press the alarm button. In this case, I don't have any set. And then to create a new one, you just hold down the alarm button and cycle through the dates and times. You can also set multiple alarms, but to be honest, it's much faster to simply tell Google to set an alarm instead of setting them manually through the buttons. Set an alarm for 8 a.m. every Friday. 
every Friday at 8 a.m. Set. One really weird thing that I noticed is that out of the box, default alarm clock volume for the actual buzzer is pretty low. Um, this might be problematic for people that say snore really loud or maybe if they have sleep apnea and they have like a machine connected to them that has a buzzing noise in the background, you might want to adjust the volume, make it louder. But don't worry, you can increase the volume. It's just not that easy though. So the low volume out of the box and the ability to adjust the alarm clock volume is not easy. And you can actually put that on Google and their terrible design. To adjust the volume, you have to open the Google Home app on your phone or tablet, find the clock in your list, hit settings, alarm and timer, and adjust it here. I tried using voice commands through Google Assistant on the clock itself to just say, hey, increase the alarm volume. It didn't understand what I was trying to tell it to do. So really, really poor design on Google there. Continuing with the physical design, at the back, there's input for power and a slider to mute the two microphones so Google Assistant can't hear you. The two microphones are actually placed on the front of the clock at the very top of the display. Continuing with the back of the clock, there is a USB charging port for your cell phone and tablet. Now, when you're charging your cell phone or tablet with a wired connection, it works just great. Now, I tried to do a little experiment by taking the USB cable connected to the back of the clock and then putting my Samsung fast wireless charger at the other end uh, to see what would happen. And when I placed my cell phone on to wirelessly charge, it kind of went bonkers. It was not a good idea on my part. You see, the charging functionality would pause, resume, pause, resume, pause, resume indefinitely. It would just kind of go crazy. I have a feeling that the USB port at the back of the clock does not provide enough power output to power the cell phone wireless charger, which then powers my cell phone being charged itself. So it's best to just use a direct wire connection to your cell phone or tablet if you're looking to use it as a charging device. Now, still in the discussion of the USB port, it is rather disappointing because it is a USB A fitting and not USB C. Underneath the unit are a couple of rubber stands, which is great if you happen to have a glass surface as a nice stand table. As I demonstrated at the beginning of this video, there's a night light, and I have to admit that is a very clever decision on Lenovo's part. Uh, the night light itself doesn't get too bright, only at 31 lumens, but it should be adequate for most people's setup, especially in pitch black, you know, in the middle of the night. It should be enough to kind of see how you want to walk over to the washroom or grab your water on the nightstand that's next to you. The controls of the nightlight are entirely powered by Google Assistant voice commands. Moving over to speaker performance, there is a single speaker in this clock with 3 watts of power. Now that doesn't sound like a lot, but remember at the end of the day, this is just simply a smart alarm clock. Uh, so don't expect the greatest sound, but I can say this, that in my master bedroom at max volume, uh, even about 80% volume, it's able to blast music throughout the entire master bedroom easily. So it can get pretty loud. In fact, here's a sound sample of what the performance is like at 100% from 10 feet away. One thing people might be wondering is what is the sound performance compared to the Google Home Mini or the second version, which is a Google Nest Mini. Well, let's take a quick sound sample and compare the two. Uh, this is the Central Clock versus the Google Nest Mini. Sound samples on YouTube don't really explain much, but in person I can tell you that the volume output is near identical. What's interesting is that the essential clock is a little bit better on mids and highs, just very, very little, whereas the Nest Mini is substantially better at bass output. Should you get this clock? Yes, I do recommend you get it. There are some caveats, like not being able to press the snooze button at the top, which is completely weird to me that Lenovo would advertise it and such a simple basic function of an alarm clock does not work. It's just plain silly. Um, if you're looking for a smart speaker for your bedroom, instead of buying you know, a simple smart speaker like the Nest Mini, which is a pretty decent device, maybe spend a little bit extra cash and get this instead. It's really up to you because it's just an all around two in one, a clock and a smart speaker that works well. So I hope you found this video useful. If you did, be sure to check my social links in the description and thanks for watching.